what I've decided to do in this video is to um, talk about the uh, our off-grid our electrical system um, and how uh, uh, it's evolved a little bit. So I did it on the truck. I, I I was sold a Victron to start off with, and I put the Victor, a Victron through I guess force of habit in the cabin as well. And it seems to work really well. A couple of things I'll be raising just off the top is that that you need all this accessible. You know, you've got you know your control lights. You're watching that all the time. You've got you know, battery monitor, and you want that somewhere accessible so you can see it. Um, the same as the circuit breakers in there. You've got fuses here, so you want those to be. You want to, you need to be able to get to them. So uh, in designing the system, which I didn't do on the truck, but I've done here, I've made it all accessible. And basically I've got two sides here, or three sides, the, the, the solar side which comes in, goes down, charges the battery. I've got the inverter side, which is this side here of the inverter, this side of the inverter. That um, changes the 12 volt battery into 240 volt. So it's 12 volt DC, a direct current, so it doesn't fluctuate. And then the AC, 240 volt AC, so it's a fluctuating color current. Um, at, at, uh, 50, I think it's 50 megahertz. Um, then feeds the normal d domestic um, subboard there, electric subboard. On the other side is the charger side, and we've got uh, that's the input for the charger. So we can plug that into a mains feed, or we can plug it into a charger. Um, either way, and then that'll charge. This is the MPPT, which is basically a solar charger. Um, this is these are quite expensive, so I've got about 1,200 watts of um, of solar panel on the roof, and um, cost me about a thousand dollars. And this charge controller also cost me about a thousand dollars. And the battery feeds into a 230 amp hour Victron AGM, also cost about a thousand dollars. So I'm not talking; these aren't things aren't cheap; they're yeah, expensive. Um, now I've got, this, I've got four panels and they're paired in series so I've got two cables coming in and they're paired again those two panels, two pairs are then paired together in series to feed into the, into the, into the, um, into the charge controller. I've got an um, uh, off on switch there so I can cut the, uh, the power off. Um, um, so on a good day when the sun's out and I think it's out right at the moment because that, that cable's quite warm um, you'll get a, what do I got, oh, I've still only got 33 coming in, and I've got 14, 14 and a half volts going out, um, and I have to replace this cable here because this gets quite warm, and there's obviously capacity I'm losing in that it because it's, it's hot all the way down. So I have to get a bigger cable to put in there. Um, one thing we watch all the time is these three lights to know what's going on. Um, when there's nothing coming out, the blue light flashes. So in the morning we look at it and we think, well, the sun's not up yet. When the sun comes up to a certain extent, then we've got the full blue light. The orange comes on when it's doing its job and it's not putting all the power into the battery. It's just um, there's an excess of power. So you're getting close to being fully, fully uh, charged, and then the float comes on when it's just floating on top of a full charge battery. So we watch those all the time. So in the design of the truck, you need to consider where that goes, so you've got easy access to it. Because you just most of the time you're thinking about 12 volts. Have we got 12 volts yet, or what? You know, we've got good vol voltage. You know, it becomes part of your life to worry about the voltage. This cabin, on a good sunny day, you know, anything but the middle of winter where we are now. Uh, most of the day will be on float, absorption of float. Um, so, you know, which is way over capacity. Just, you know, 1200 watts of solar panels, way over capacity. We're running computers and a fridge and lighting and fans, um, uh, a, a pump, water pump, um, fan for the, uh, the composting toilet, and it's way over capacity. <coughs> the problem is, as always, with this sort of system, is the battery. The issue is, not so much for a truck, but in a cabin or any sort of residential use, 
most of your power is used when the sun is not shining. Most of your power generated from the solar panel is when you're not in the house, not using a large amount of power. So you need to be able to store it, otherwise it's completely irrelevant to you, it's pointless. So you need a battery or some other form of energy storage to, to leave it out. So you, the battery is unavoidable. Lithiums are obviously better. Two year, two, two year lifespan. This is a 230 amp. We can only take it down to about half charge. So we're only getting 150 amp hours out of that battery. Lithium you can take down much further. It has 10 year lifespan. Um, it also has a, a better um, charging release. It, it's about 90%. The AGM is about, I think it's about 75%, so it, it doesn't let off as, nearly as much power that it takes in. There's a loss there. Um, we have these new supercapacitor batteries, which are sort of just on the horizon now. They're about 95%. This is also bloody heavy, you know, which is a consideration. You pop a couple of these in a the truck, there's, you know, two people basically. Extra you're carrying around all the time. Um, so it's a big, you know, batteries are, need a lot of thought. And but you need them. They're, they're indispensable because you need to be able to store the power coming out of it. You need to bulk the power up in some way and then let it out. So that's this side. The side. So now I'm going to go up from the battery. Um, we've got the active here. Coming up, I've got a, uh, basically a fuse or circuit breaker. This is a thermal one here, 50 amp. Um, rather than just a normal fuse you put in it's it's a uh, um, you can be re-triggered so you don't have to replace it if it goes the next thing is this smart battery protector from Victron being blue it's a Victron one um, and it replicates what's inside here so there's a low battery alarm inside here which will sit, switch this system off but this will only switch it off as the inverter side to the 240 volt the Smart battery protector switches the whole system off and it goes to um, uh, the 12 volt side here. So, um, and that's fairly essential too when you're trying to protect batteries. You don't want to run them, run them right down. So that's fairly essential. Now from there we go to you know, uh, switch to turn the power off and then into the uh, uh, inverter. I've got my 12 volt coming out of the inverter but it's, uh, I'm only using the terminals in there I'm not, they're not using anything in the inverter the 12 volt comes out and it goes to a distribution board with the uh, neutral on the top and all the uh, active there um, and these normal little car fuses now there's some sort of law of nature I don't know it's got a name or something I don't know but your fuses already go always go in the middle of the night and you you know it'll be a real problem on the truck I've got this Chinese made sort of automotive boat switchboard it's just a massive wiring in the back of it with the little you know, fuses you stick in a little plastic sort of thing you've got to find it and you, you know you've got to take it off it's just a bloody it's just a joke um, it's very hard to get it to work you can't see what's going on there you're in the middle of the night you know this doesn't have all the lights and switches or charges or, or voltage meter on it, but it's simple to use. It's much, much better. It's better made, and that's much, much better than the one in the truck. The other item on the negative side, coming up the negative side, is this uh, black thing here, which is the voltage meter. Um, uh, at the moment it's reading 13.9. Uh, I'll eventually go in the door there. Now we're on absorption, so not everything's going in to the battery. So the battery's getting, you know, it doesn't need as much as that's providing. So I've got excess rate. So if I turn this off now, so this is what's being fed in because this is active. So we've got the charge that's going into the battery, and that's what's basically going in 13.38 volts. If I turn it off, so the battery's now, it's actually battery is charged to 12 volts, 12.04, it's ticking down, we go to 11.8 or something or other. Um, so the battery's still charging up, but the absorption mode of the MPPT is giving it as much charge as it thinks it needs to get it up as quickly as it, it, it can. On this, this is another Victron 
thing. I just use Vicron because they seem to work. Everybody else uses it. It's good gear, I think. Um, so I've got amps. It's got 11 amps. It's got 152 watts at the moment. So the fridge is on. Last time I looked it was uh, 80 amps. So the fridge is operating at the moment. So up until now I really haven't talked about the inverter. The 12 volt side can run without an inverter. Charger inverter. What the charge does is char so it gives you the ability to charge the battery up from an outside source from mains or a generator and it inverts the 12 volt into 240 volt. So this is the, this here, we've got the 240 volt AC alternating current as opposed to the direct current of a direct of, of a battery coming out and going into the normal residential um, subboard with the main switch and the breakers three bakers. Overkill, probably a lot of overkill there for what for the amount of power we're dealing with. I think I've probably got with probably even one of those. Um, on the other on the charge side we've got charge so this cable goes out to a to a um it's a short shore supply pl plug or some of them call them a caravan plug. You can plug an extension lead into it from a you know from your caravan side it'll it will um <coughs> Uh, you plug it into your feed or you can put a generator into it and then the bulk absorption of float, much the same as this, will come up there. Now, I'll talk about the battery in a minute, Hold on, the generator, um, the minute, in a minute I've got a lot of problems with the generator I've got. Uh, I've got a fantastic little Honda i1000 but this draws too much. It just doesn't want to, you want it once more so it puts that little generator into overload and it won't it won't do it. So, um, whereas the generator I've got is a crap one, and um, it's time we've got more solar being generated the little roof of this cabin than we need. We've got heaps and heaps of solar, and this battery will charge up every day and um, and run what we've got in here all night. Uh, we haven't. It doesn't heat and doesn't cook, but everything else, lighting, computers. We've got big screen computers. Uh, we've got the fans, lights fridge, you know, normal domestic fridge, no problem whatsoever. Um, and in the truck I don't have one of these, so I've got a problem, I've got to charge all the time, um, every day, so I just can't, you just can't leave the truck alone and then let it run out of, to down to a level and then the battery's totally disconnected, it doesn't do that in the truck, so that's a problem. So I've now transferred all the, uh, Victron power stuff onto the inside. The batteries are still out in the storage space at the back, but I've, uh, everything else is brought forward. I've also replaced the, uh, what I don't particularly like, the Chinese uh, um, distribution board with this little one here. I've got some uh, switches down the uh, outside, which I'm still to lay <coughs> label. Um, the 240 volt AC side's still the same. Down here, importantly, I've uh, put in a battery protect. Now I really need that because the battery, the two um, 140 amp hour batteries I've got in the truck, I think they're dead. I think they're, they're charging up to about 12 and then, but they're not holding. I can't get them any higher. Um, I'm going to do a few things, a few tests on them, see if I can get them back, but I suspect I'll be buying new batteries. Um, they went dead because I didn't have a battery protect. That's why the, these things are so important. Um, up on the left of the screen at the moment there'll be the uh, the Wi-Fi connection to that little device showing the voltage and that it cuts off um, and how you can play around with it to get to change those settings. Um, same fuses. On this side I've got the inverter, my little solar cha charger. Um, it's only 100 by 30 with um I've got I think I've got about 300 watts of solar on the roof of this. Uh, and I'm about to upgrade that and put a lot more, as much as I possibly can. You know, I know in, in an early video I said, oh, you don't have, need solar panels, you know, just get a thumping big bloody generator, um, which I did. Uh, and obviously I was completely and utterly wrong with that, you know. The solar panels are quite good. You've got this good gear, you may as well use it, you know. Talking to other people with these sorts of trucks. If you manage what you do, you can actually uh, um, just go on the solar panels alone and never start your generator. So if you've got plenty of panels and a good set of batteries and you manage what you do, um, everything will be fine, <laughs> so to speak.